Yeah, I agree with you. Now I'm going to divert a little bit because I want to use your story as, as a point that I wanted to make here. And that is when you look at the workforce, so the people that are coming into the workforce now, and you know, I want to say it's more of a younger generation, the expectations people have, they go to college, they immediately expect to be making, you know, high five figure salaries, six figure salaries and jumping right into their dream job. And the reality is that's just not how it works anymore. You know, you, you've got to find uh, a place like you had uh, becoming a bellman to ultimately, or not a bellman, but becoming a, a bus boy to work your way and integrate your way into that company to achieve your ultimate goal. And that was in the marketing department. But, you know, oftentimes I'll interview people or see resumes and say, what, what are your expectations? And, well, you know, I expect to be making 65 grand a year and, you know, this and that. They want all these perks and benefits. I'm like, you just got out of college. You know, I mean, uh, you, right now you'd be lucky to get a job, you know, making 35 to 40. And um, I think that people's expectations right now are just so high. Uh, really, they're setting themselves up for disappointment and failures. And I think it's a, a sad, sad place to be. Um, but I hope that we can share more stories of how we've all struggled and gotten to where we are. You know, you bring up fast food and, and, and restaurants and working for tips. And I agree with you on that. Um, people that listen to my show know that I spent a lot of years working for In-N-Out Burger. Um, they recently had an article come out that says their average store manager makes $150,000 a year. Now, for those listening, that means you've worked your way up from the guy that worked in the dining room, picking up trash, wiping down tables, to eventually got promoted to taking orders, then taking drive through orders, working fries, and then cooking the burgers, and ultimately becoming a store manager. So there's a long path to make that one hundred fifty grand a year. But it's definitely there. And I think that that's what the message is, is find the path, follow it, starts out slow and hard, and eventually you'll achieve what you want. And I think we're seeing that with Chris. Um, Chris, your, your career, you mentioned you've been in marketing now for many, many years. Um, and, and I'd love to hear about some, what some of your stops along the way were once you got that job at Planet Hollywood doing marketing um, and where you've been since then. Huh. Yeah, that's great. So big heavy hitter jobs now. Uh, you come a long ways from busting some tables at Planet Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I love hearing that because you're right. The service industry really feels a lot your way that you could feed off 
for the rest of your life, you know, in terms of lessons learned, opportunities, et cetera. You know, oftentimes when I'm out and about in, you know, being served by somebody, I'm looking at them as somebody's, gosh, is this somebody I'd like to hire one day? And I have actually hired some of the baristas I've gone to at, at the coffee shops because they were just fantastic people. So you never know, you never know who you're serving. Keep that in the back of your mind. Do the best job you can possibly do all the time because you just might get that lucky break serving coffee or whatever it is you're doing. You know, um, when, when, when we talked before the show, uh, you mentioned uh, having a self-pity party and kind of move. You, you didn't want to be in that position moving out of that. And I'd love to hear, um, I, I kind of know what the end of that was, but tell us about what, what you meant by self-pity party and kind of moving through thinking about your legacy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so so you're you're not a comedian by trade, right? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. 
So I, I get, I guess it went well for you then. You had some good material. You got a, a few laughs, and and you survived. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, sure. Ne Mm-hmm. Well, I think it's genius for a variety of reasons. First of all, your content itself is important. Second, to compare, you know, today's business to a, a movie resonates with people because you know if you see a movie it evokes emotion and feeling and here you are applying that to um, a business relationship but the fact that you picked the 80s movies and if, if you're not if you weren't around in the 80s and you're not familiar with these movies they're worth going back and watching especially for my younger audience uh, these movies had cult-like followings i mean literally i remember you know females in my life in the 90s and early 2000s going, oh, that was my favorite movie. We got to watch it. They would watch these movies over and over and over again. Like The the Breakfast Club's got to be one of the top 80s movies uh, that were out there, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 